So peace and good morning. Uh, my name is Steve I. Cook. I'm here with uh, the homie Paul Garcia. What's up, Paul? How's it going, man? <laughs> man. Thanks, for, thanks for having me. Thanks for the invite. It's great. Uh, I've seen a lot of your work online, on YouTube, especially with uh, Jerry Rice, who is my childhood hero. Mm -hmm. So uh, a big, big time fan growing up. So that, that was that was awesome. So I'm a you big fan. Texas, so you're supposed to be a Cowboys fan, right? I, you, know what, you know what, man? Okay, so I'm a, right, I'm, a, I'm an advocate, you know, a uh, big time advocate. A lot of us advocates are rebels, mm -hmm. right? So my whole family loved the Dallas Cowboys. I was at one, one sheet that was like, no, I'm going with the 49ers. <laughs> and so, I mean, I, 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 Steve Young and, and um, gosh, who was the Garrison Hurst? You got had Garrison Hurst and J.J. Oh, wow. Stokes. Man. Like, those are good times. So. You're, you're a real fan. Yeah, those yeah. are <laughs> yeah, I had all the action figures and stuff, so. Uh -huh. That was pretty cool. Yeah, so I'm always kind of always a rebel. <laughs> I guess even on my board right now, you might want to see I'm the I'm the rebel, you know, young guy. So yeah, uh, thanks for inviting me. It's awesome. Yeah, now nah, this is uh, so I've been sort of casually calling this uh, cook on corn, cook on Corona. I could also call it cook on quarantine. But just yeah. do a little more proper setup. You're in El Paso, Texas. You're one of the members of the. Um, school board which which and i know there's two boards in el paso right or is there more than two? Oh yeah more than two but uh i sit on the uh support independent school district school board i'm the at bars trustee so uh we have uh our district has forty eight thousand students we got about eight thousand uh employees uh 48 schools we got gosh a budget of like 400 million or so so it's just it's a big, big district, so. Mm -hmm. And then when did you get elected? I got elected last year in May. So coming up on my one-year anniversary, pretty, uh, okay. okay. You know, yeah. one heck of a ride. <laughs> yeah, we should get into it. Um, I, uh, I'm, in, I'm in the fourth year of my first term in San Francisco. And um, so, so, you know, instead of running for re-election, I'm running for another position. Um, part of what I've been doing, you know, around the video stuff that you mentioned, I, you know, I do a podcast called Cook on Monday Morning. That's available on all the podcast platforms. And before that, I wrote a blog that um, was called Cook on Monday Morning also, but it was like short stories. And all those are, are now, they now live at stevoncook.com. And, um, you know, for... When I was when I was coming up, I was really inspired by my um, great grandfather to start like building something for myself, and so I named the company after him called the Luther Harris Holding Company, and then all these different um, story platforms are sort of like also a way to build, um, um, you know, way to build um, another type of community that uh, inspires people that um, also can yield to building more, you know, partnerships that can be meaningfully, mutually beneficial uh, in, in the way of like either consulting or whatever the case may be. And so um, to, to run for office, which you've done and now uh, have succeeded at, what what would you say is like the type of people people are often ask like oh why did you run right but I I think that you have to it has to be something about you that will incline you to run. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what was sort of going on inside you that led you to say I'm going to do this I'm going to run for office? I guess so. I guess the foundation started. Uh, and uh, you know, I definitely have to give him some credit. Um, is my my dad was is, had me involved in, in the political scene here local for since I was like 15 years old. So I, I got to kind of see how things worked, kind of sometimes how long it took for things to get done. <laughs> but um, uh, 
and I just developed a, a deep interest for, for politics itself. Um, and I think as you know, and any elected official knows, you go through an evolution uh, through your political journey. Um, you know, at first you're, uh, you know, I'm gonna change the world, I'm gonna change the world, I'm gonna do this, and then you start seeing the bureaucracy part of it. Okay, oh, then there's the political aspect of it. Okay, then there's, I mean, so many factors, you know, the, the, the regulations, the, the federal laws, um, the timing of things. You know, and then so, you know, from there you just kind of just start learning and evolving. Um, I still want to change the world. I still want to do good things for, for great, for, for kids, uh, especially our most disadvantaged ones. Um, but, you know, from where I started being involved in politics until now, I say I, I've evolved so much um, where I have found and connected with my deep purpose and passion. Now, a lot of people tell me like, man, how, how is it that you, 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 you just, you go to these board meetings and you, you're just so firm on your stance and, and you, you know, you're, you don't, uh, you don't bend so easy. And it's like, when you know what you want to get done, you, you, you don't, I mean, it's a core value, you know, am I gonna stand up for the, most uh, economically disadvantaged, absolutely. And I'm not gonna bend for anyone or anything, you know, on any issue on that. Am I going to bend on uh, being transparent uh, and, you know, allowing um, administration to, to decrease the layers of transparency regarding financial stuff? Of course not, you know, I'm gonna make sure that, that there's extreme transparency and make people accountable those are just deep rooted um values that i have and so um you know i, I think it, it, it makes my job a little easier it makes others job a lot harder because <laughs> they got to deal with that but um yeah that's that has been my you know my journey you know my father was a school board member uh, for for one term which is four years <clears throat> at large and, uh, you know, I sort of ran his campaign. I think I must have been like 18 years old or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he won. He lost his reelection. And, mm -hmm. you know, that was that. But, uh, you know, he definitely had a major influence, you know. Also been influenced by I mean, great, great leaders like Beto O'Rourke. A uh, good friend of mine, great, great guy. Uh, so inspirational. You know, I remember. The congressman, the ran for president and ran for senator. And that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Beth, though, I remember uh, coordinating with him um, and because he was a city councilman and, you know, taking my, my, my community college class to the city hall chambers and him giving us a tour and just having conversations with him about, you know, policy, public policy and what it is to do the right thing. Um, great people like Veronica Escobar, who's our, our fearless leader. Uh, in Congress right now, who's doing amazing, amazing work. Uh, Xochitl Torres, an awesome congresswoman out of uh, Southern New Mexico. You know, there's just so many great leaders coming out of the border here, you know, our, our, our borderland, that uh, if you pay attention, you know, definitely very inspirational. Yeah, yeah, and, the, and you know, being at the border, and that's like at the front line of a, a very, um, ongoing political conversation, policy conversation um, about about uh, you know immigration and uh, perceptions of uh, um, what it means to come to this country, and it's highlighted a lot of gaps in our process. You know, I, well, it says my internet connection is unstable. Do you still? Yeah, yeah. You kind of froze there a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, everyone, everyone's broadband is like um, taking a hit because we're all online right now. Let's, let, let me get into a little bit of like who you are outside of your political role. Okay. Um, you're a father. Father of three. And how old are your kids? Uh, see, Alexander is eight, Madison is five, and Kennedy is three. Okay, okay. <laughs> Eight, ten, you said eight, ten, and three. 
A five and three. A five and three. A <laughs> five and three. Um, what uh, what's your favorite music? You know what? <clears throat> I like old school music. <clears throat> okay. I mean, eighties, nineties. Um, you know, I'll throw down some. <clears throat> um, I don't know. Just maybe throw in some ACDC. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, usually this is an interesting thing. When I would go and canvas, knock on doors and stuff like that, block, block, I would throw on my, my ACD. I would not, not, not CD, but my ACDC uh, track, and I just get so pumped up. Mm-hmm. It, it always, you know, gets me in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so definitely for sure, that band. The script, <clears throat> I love the script. The words. The, that they use and uh, is just inspirational because mm-hmm. it talks about changing the world, believing in yourself, uh, not giving up. I mean, it's just like you can do it. You know, be, you can be the underdog, but you, I love that stuff. Um, what else do I like to do? Uh, yeah. What's your uh, and 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 are you married? Married, married to uh, Melissa Garcia. She's uh, we're coming up on ten years. Okay. She's uh, she does a decade in the game. I know. Man. <laughs> she has, uh, HR for a uh, local hospital here, so she's also seeing a lot of stuff with this COVID nineteen. So it's scary, mm-hmm. scary times. Well, so <clears throat> how how long has like um, I think I think El Pot talk a little bit about the approach that. Uh, El Paso took around like shelter in place or what it's been doing currently there yeah. um, compared to what the state is yeah. talking about because I know that there was like a um, deferment to localities for a minute from, coming from your governor's office like what is that yeah so I mean the government is pretty pretty much allowing the local municipalities to make the decision uh, it wasn't until recently that the shelter in place um, you know, took effect. I think it was this, I think it was this week. Yeah. So I think it was this week. Um, you know, pretty much only if you're, uh, and El Paso made the decision or the governor did El Paso. No, 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 no Paso. So, okay. you know, if you're, if you're an essential employee, you can be out in the, or essential business, you can be open or not. Mm-hmm. And they're shutting you down. So it's, um, it's, it's pretty scary right now. You know, we got <clears throat> for restaurants, if you want to eat out, I guess you might want to say, um, you know, you're going to have to do a uh, pickup. So one thing that I've been doing is I've been teaming up with local restaurants to, uh, you know, I'll purchase, I don't know, maybe $200 worth of food. And then I'll just throw something out of my Facebook. Like, you know, any teachers that, any SISD employees, school district employees that, you know, first, 20 that show up to this local restaurant, we get a free uh, shrimp cocktail or a pizza. And uh, so far the, uh, the employees are really loving it. And, and I'm getting contacted by so many uh, businesses. They're like, hey, we want to partner up with you. you know, we're, we're seeing how effective it's being for our business. Uh, thank you. And so it's, uh, I'm just trying to do as much as I can to keep folks' hopes up, keep them happy. No, I mean, being quarantined, it's, it's, you're not used to it, <laughs> it's, which I don't think any of us are, but it's, uh, it's tough. So. Yeah, that's actually a great idea um, to, to offer that as like a partnership, <laughs> to offer that as a partnership opportunity. Um, I've never been to El Paso. You know, you the only, the only uh, perception I have is uh, no country for old men. And I talked to you about that. <laughs> like, what is this? Like, describe El Paso for me. Oh man, it's just a, it's the most beautiful place. The best Mexican food that you're gonna have. Uh, mm-hmm. We got the best tacos. Um, what are the, what are the top spots? Somebody can do. What do they have to go? Oh, you got to go to Alan Jay's. Amazing yeah. food, locally owned. It's been in business for years. Um, another really cool spot. Uh, they don't do a lot of advertising. Uh, they don't need to, but uh, it's called uh, Monteleone's Restaurant. And uh, I believe the owner there used to work for Universal Studios. So he, he, so you go there and, and just the, 
the environment, it's kind of like a spooky Italian place. He's got uh, like props, props out where you can, you know, you can see like gangsters. It's just, just, just pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. Pizza's amazing mm -hmm. um, for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah got, I mean, there's, there's, there's so much. Uh, the Chihuahua, we, we just got the Chihuahua's baseball a few, uh, a few years ago, which is the minor league. Uh, minor league. Mm -hmm. So that's always cool to go and check out. So mm -hmm. we got to bring you down. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I mean, I actually, I actually really like Texas. I really like Houston. I like Dallas. Um, I think that, like, um, I think that the people, a lot of people from Texas are really proud to be from Texas. And, like, um, and for different reasons, you know, there's like a, there's, there's a pretty strong black middle class too that I see in Texas, which, uh, in the places that I've gone, which, um, which is not as, there's not like a strong black middle class in San Francisco. You know, there is a middle class, but it's not, it's kind of like, you know, it's very low popu small population. A lot of people have left California to go to Texas. Like Austin is like a big go-to um, spot in terms of conversation, but you know, I don't want to, I don't want to leave San Francisco to go somewhere else like San Francisco, you know? <laughs> so, um, so I'm definitely interested in, uh, you know, whatever Texas has to offer. And, um, so, you know, you grew up in that city too, right? Yes. What, what was like the, I mean, what, what are some like your top hobbies? Like, what do you do to kind of, when you're not thinking about school board stuff, what's some of the stuff you're into? Gosh, it's, I mean, I just almost feel like school board is a 24 seven thing. <laughs> you're, you're a dad too, so you gotta do that. And you gotta, you know, yeah, uh, wife. Like, growing up, I did some boxing. Okay. That was always cool, you know, uh, go to the, to the local gym and hit the bags. Mm -hmm. uh, they turn off the air conditioner and you just, just sweat. It was the best workout ever. Mm -hmm. uh, so for sure that, and I also played four wall handball. Okay. Uh, a lot of people don't know what that is. Uh, it's similar to racquetball. Uh -huh. uh, we play with the smaller ball. And uh, I'm actually a two-time national champion. I uh, won nationals out there in California at uh, Los Caballeros, uh, Los Caballeros racket, rec, or is it racket Club. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's in uh, San Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, I played a lot of handball at the – downtown YMCA mm -hmm. so you know those are two of my big hobbies boxing and handball okay okay so with your hands you like to uh you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah just well, what was your favorite what was your favorite punch you know the jab uh -huh. I needed to get punched so it was always just keep the guy away <laughs> just keep uh -huh. the guy away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I actually uh just started taking Muay Thai classes so all of the within the last like year and a half so all of the technical ways to punch i just learned you know like how to you know what your stance supposed to be like how to lean in like how to move your ankles there's so much more footwork than i imagine um and and so with your with your kids like how are you thinking about um the types of stuff to involve them in it sounds like you emphasized being active is that something you're doing with them oh for sure you know anything that my, my children want to try to do get involved in I, I do my best to fulfill that that desire that they have you know my son has tried to see hockey <laughs> soccer basketball football uh he's been wanting to do boxing but I'm like no no you're not gonna do boxing <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, right now he's playing football and you know my daughters are in ballet and dance Mm -hmm. uh, they love that stuff so uh, yeah just staying active with the family a lot of reading I read to the kids a lot you know we sit down at the dinner table and we have these conversations about current events mm -hmm. in my opinion I think it's so important to just have that conversation with them so that they recognize what's going on in the world right now mm -hmm. without instilling fear obviously and you know I make sure that that their fears um, are I have an answer to their questions and make sure that, you know what I mean? So uh, just like the other day, you know, my son was like, oh, dad, I'm afraid of this. What is, what is this virus? And, you know, so I explained it to him in a way that's, you know, gentle, but realistic. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, and I, and I do that because I know for me growing up, like, I mean, we never had those conversations. I didn't even know what the heck was going on in the current, in the current events. Like, was, you know, my life was like Madden, you know, uh, PlayStation or Super Nintendo, you know, Super Nintendo, Sega, and school, and like, that was it. Like, I'm going to go shoot some hoops. Right. But, you know, I definitely want, um, you know, me and my wife definitely want to raise our kids, you know, to be active and aware of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I think it makes them, it will make them a little bit of a better individual, a little bit more empathetic. empathetic. Um, so, that's good. Yeah. yeah, that's what's up, man. Um, I, uh, I've been, you know, I have conversations with parents a lot obviously because of our work we both do and um and educators a lot and uh you know I'm, i don't have children myself but i'm such a firm believer that like most of the learning should happening should be happening at home and that uh and it's also important to, to teach our children like knowledge itself to like instill values that um and, and talk about a history that is uh, aligned with who they are as people and that um, gives them a positive frame for how they can see themselves in, in the world around them. And I think that's especially important for uh, families that represent like our ethnicities because typically those are the communities that aren't doing well in public education, you know? Um, like, uh, I kind of want to get into um, like, you know, with, with, with Texas, Texas has, I mean, California does also a very large um, Latinx population. And um, I mean, in San Francisco, uh, in our public ed- education system, uh, the Latino community represents like 25% of our students. While wow, like, uh, Black students are like eight percent. Really? What is the wow. yeah, yeah? What is what is that breakdown like for El Paso in your public school system? Yeah, so I mean, we're predominantly Hispanic. Uh, we are seeing an increase in in, um, in the black population here locally, uh, especially in my school. The, in our school is. What percentage is predominant? What is it? Percentage? Oh, you're high high percentage. I mean, maybe like. 80, 85, 88, 90 maybe sure. Hispanic. Um, but we are seeing a lot more uh, of the black population, you know, primarily I think it's because of Fort Bliss. So like my son's coach, I think they're, where are they from? They're from, um, they're from New, uh, is it New Orleans? I think it's New Orleans. New Orleans. And they, yeah, and they, they um, and the, the coach got, a, got stationed here at Fort Bliss. So, okay. uh, you know, we get a lot of... What do you, what do you think about the term, like, I, I, use, I use the term um, Latinx, like, and you said Hispanic. What do you think about the, the discussion about that term? Like, what's guess, that? Oh, and I guess I'm kind of old school, man. <laughs> you know, I'm still, uh, yeah, I guess I'm kind of old school when it comes to that. Um, but, yeah, I'm just, I guess I'm just used to using that, that word, Hispanic. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking for guidance from you. I feel like I feel, in our work too, I don't know what El Paso is like, but like uh, in terms of political correctness, uh-huh. but um, and, and being in politics and how we use our words, yeah, like it can always come back to bite us. And I always feel like I'm like, uh, and I've heard some pushback recently, just an article, headline articles about um, I think you're, you froze. <laughs> there. <laughs> Was it good? Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't know what happened. I, I don't know. You just it just froze. Um, did you hear what I was saying or no? Yeah, something about 
Latinx and being politically correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, and, and I'm a, and I'm gonna be uh, honest. I'm pretty straight up. You know, folks. Uh, there's a lot to learn. You know, I know me and you are both part of the school board partners, and I learned so much mm -hmm. uh, regarding the terms and. Uh, <coughs> theories of thinking, the theory of change, you just, and, you know, how, you just think, how many, how many others out there don't know, you know, what is, you know, I mean, what we know, I mean, you, you know, with these social terms, so it just, it's, it's gonna, it takes a while, you know, it takes a while to educate a population, or inform a population, so, yeah. um, I'm always open to be educated, you know, inform me, educate me, and, I love learning. I love uh, listening to different perspectives and theories. So, you know, I'm open. I believe you're telling the truth, but I also think you're being safe. <laughs> no, I mean it's it's the it's the straight it's being straight up. I mean, I yeah. no, I believe you. I believe you. I just you know I also really enjoy learning, but I also um, have been not on this kind of topic in particular, but on other topics I've been like. A bit, um, uh, I don't want maybe I'm, I'm concerned about um, about how political correctness could be getting in the way of progress. Yeah, um, because we're so focused on like not offending people as opposed to improving outcomes for people, you know. And uh, I do think that names matter and representation matters. More than that, competence, competence matters. And people knowing how to do things is important. Yeah. And so with, when I look about the trends in our education system, you know, what our, what our schools have not been able to accomplish for the communities that we, we represent, uh, I'm often frustrated and I'm like, man, like, you know, what is what is the what what answer should we be giving the to families like and I'm thinking like man we gotta there's an urgency and we gotta pick up the slack where our schools um, can't meet the need and that's that puts an additional onus on families because obviously they're grappling with a lot you know they have to work and all this other stuff but I don't I don't see how we really um, fill the gaps unless we ask as like, as a community that we, we do it collectively with our own children. Yeah, for sure. Um, what are some of the top priorities you have for this year? Well, for sure, uh, you know, social equity, you know, um, making sure that so in my school district, they, you know, you have like, you know, they call it like the north side of the freeway and the south side. And for sure it's, you know, one of my major priorities has been to uh, be a voice for the south, the south, south of the freeway, mm -hmm. um, uh, the Socorro area, uh, and, and making sure that they, they have a voice. You know, um, recently we had uh, an issue regarding loss of credit. Um, in a nutshell, students were allowed to graduate without, without meeting the requirements of graduation, both, mm -hmm. both, both in attendance and in grades. Mm -hmm. And for me, I don't take that lightly. It was, it was roughly around, estimated about 30 students. And that's not okay, I think you're still in education. One student, one student is too much. Uh, and it is my understanding that with a school district as large as ours, there are going to be some mistakes when it comes to things like that. But when you have 30 of them, I'm not the only one that has, that has this opinion. And it's pretty widespread that when you got 30 students graduating that not meeting the requirements because of these things, so there's, there's a systemic issue there. Uh, and it was one thing that we, it, it, it was an issue that was really dear to my heart because um, I did, I was, I had difficulty graduating high school. You know, um, and I wish I would have been pushed a little bit more. But uh, so that you know, obviously, so you know, for sure, advocating for for, uh, for students 
in, in, the, in the Sokoto area and uh, being transparent, um, community outreach. You know, I've been doing my best to get out there and engage the community. Um, you know, our, our board uh, has, you know, before, the, you know, the three new, new folks got, got on, it had been primarily the same for about, I don't know, eight years, nine years. And, you know, I believe that that breeds complacency. It does. You know, when things are just, you know, it's just, this is run, you know, run, run through the course, you're going to get complacent. You got to have a little pushback. It makes you more disciplined. It makes you sharper. It gets people on their toes, you know. So, you know, one thing I've been doing is just for sure involving the community, engaging them through my social media. Uh, I've been planning a town hall meeting. And, I would, you know, that was in the works, but, you know, COVID-19 kind of just killed everything. Right. Uh, but, you know, one of, my, one of my big things is just that community engagement, listening to the community. I mean, we took out, we beat two incumbents that had been there for like two terms. I think that's like eight years. Um, so, and what I kept hearing as I knocked on the doors is we want to change. We want people to be held accountable. We want transparency. We want to have a voice. And I think I'm delivering on that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you are. I, 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 hear, I hear the passion. Um, and I see how uh, active you're trying to be. And um, I know in our work, uh, you know, school board members, like for the people we get to touch, they deeply appreciate it. Um, but it's not this type of work that comes with all this fanfare, you know, <laughs> and people typically come at us when things aren't going well. So let me say to you that, like, uh, thank you. I commend you. Thank you, sir. Um, stay encouraged. You know, um, stay hungry. And, uh, you know, I, th I think that we've been called to be in this position for a reason and uh, trust that calling more over anything um do you have like a do you have a book recommendation for just it just like, don't matter yeah. it's like your favorite book like it, it don't it don't have to be politically related you know just like i like this one david goggins you uh, <laughs> i read that one <laughs> i read that one that man fires me up like no other. I, I mean, that man gets me up at three in the morning. Uh -huh. I'm hitting the treadmill. I'm doing calisthenics and push-ups, and I mean, just an amazing human that I just uh, I'm a huge fan of. So yeah, can't hurt me, David Goggins for sure. Yeah, well, that's a good one. And you know what? I'm gonna tell you what David got. That book had me doing. Cause like <laughs> I typically don't have a story related to a book, but <laughs> yeah. I was like I was reading the Goggins book, and um, I ran from my house to Ocean Beach, right, the Pacific Ocean, and I just ran into the ocean. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I just wow. like was like ah, it jumped into the freezing cold water. It was like it was it was it wasn't especially cold outside, but it was pretty chilly, you know. Oh, I, I love it. I love it. The, just the, the discipline. I love it. You know, and, and that's the challenge for me in this COVID-19 has been, you know, I mean, aside from the major stuff, right? But, you know, the fact to being quarantined is just like, I don't, like, I'm used to being at the gym at three in the morning, mm -hmm. you know, I'm used to taking my, 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 my cold shower at the gym and just having that routine. And, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know, I, I feel like, being quarantined kind of just has made me a little bit relaxed mm. and I don't like it. I don't like it. And I'm at home and there's snacks around and there's <laughs> cookies in there and you got the wife cook baking cakes. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, uh, oh, I, and it's crazy how one cheat meal leads to another, uh, to another, to, and before you know, you're like, man, I cheated this whole week. What the heck? And, uh, you know, um, but you know, I think this week I've, I've turned it around, you know, I've been a lot more disciplined and, and I think that, believe it or not, that makes me a better school board member. It makes me sharper. I, I just, I'm, give me the material. Let's go and mm -hmm. just, just read it and just take notes and just be more disciplined. I, I, 
it's just it's amazing what what, what Goggins has done for me in my life. So. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Man. That's what's up. That's what's up. So ACDC was the music. David Goggins, you can't hurt me, is the book. Um, how can people get a reach out to you, um, get a hold of you? What's your social media handles? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> maybe you just search Polly Garcia, I guess SISD trusty, you, you know, on Facebook, you can probably find me there. Um, let's see, let's, let's, uh, let's see what my Twitter, uh, <laughs> I don't even know my handle. I mean, I got like probably like 900 folks here. So it's going to be, my Twitter will be at Paul E Garcia six. And then my Instagram is going to be, Paul E. Dot Garcia. Dot nine one five. Because I I'm I created these accounts when I I mean I wasn't even planning on running or anything and like nah. they're not even catchy you know usually you want to make it like make it yeah. easy like I'm, from nah. a marketing perspective for people to remember it I'm just like <laughs> yeah but um it's yeah. Not good. I mean I'm an author of two books you know uh, the Adventures of Rocky Bear uh, highly recommend the paperback version <laughs> and um. Uh, super Xander. That's a, and it's an, that one's an anti-bullying, uh, anti-bullying perspective. So. How do people get those books? Amazon. Nice, man. I didn't know you wrote, but you're an author. We didn't get into that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm an author. Uh, Three in the morning, cold showers too. Like I, I was big in the cold showers for a minute. I started again yesterday because nice. I took a break from cold showers and I was just like, Cause I just wanted like that edge back. Cause you know, I mean, you know, the benefits standing in front of that water is like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think what's worse is probably like the, the, the right before you're going to get into that cold water, you're like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. It's gonna suck. Like, you're like, man, and then you, you can't lie to yourself. There's no one else around. You know, you're just there, you know, you're naked and you're like, man, what am I? Uh -huh. if, if, if I, if I was out of this, then, I'm gonna know in my, my heart all day long that I just, uh, I just dive in there. Right, know? right. And then if you when you do it, the rest of the day is like, oh yeah, yeah. After that, I just did the, you know. It's crazy. So, yeah, yeah. Dang, there's a whole. See, look, that's that whole. We could have got. We could have had a whole conversation on like self improvement. Oh yeah. Um, morning routines. Uh, you know, the books that have inspired that. And because uh, all of that is the baseline for how any of this other stuff happens, you know, so that's cool, man. So uh, published author, um, father of three, uh, community leader, um, the homie Paul. That's right. <laughs> Thanks for doing this, man. You got it. You got it.